Hello, my friends, and welcome back to yet another episode of I Love Being Sober. My name is Tim Westbrook, and I'm the CEO of Camelback Recovery at Camelback Integrated Health and Wellness here in the always sunny and always sober Scottsdale, Arizona, where my team and I, over the course of many years, have helped thousands of people on their path to recovery. Visit camelbackrecovery.com to learn more about our treatment strategies for alcoholism, drug addiction, or mental illness, and we even offer recovery coaching so that you can enjoy the freedom and happiness you've always searched for. Today, I'm here with Dr. Greg Eckel, and we're gonna talk about the amazing brain and how the brain can essentially repair itself. While teaching preschool in the mid 1990s, Dr. Eckel became increasingly concerned with the over-medication of children, inspiring his entry into naturopathic and Chinese medicine. With the passing of his wife, Soraya, from Kreutzfeldt Jacob disease, a condition with no cure, Dr. Eckel developed a deep personal knowledge of chronic neurological conditions. This deep dive uncovered regenerative medicine, the development of a brain regenerative program, and a nasal spray specific to calm neuroinflammation in the brain. He began adopting procedures such as intranasal stem cell delivery to bypass the blood brain barrier and mind-body techniques to reverse anxiety and PTSD. It became apparent to him that the future of medicine lies in frequency. With this remembered knowledge, he's leading the way of bringing bioenergetics mainstream. Dr. Eichel has been, on, been seen on ABC, NBC, Fox, and local networks as he works to make his approaches more accessible to communities he's serving. He's reached over 150,000 people with his online brain regeneration and bioenergetic summits. In 2018, he published his first book, Shake It Off, an integrative approach to Parkinson's solutions. He served as the president of the board of naturopathic medical examiners appointed by the governor of Oregon. Dr. Eckel, welcome to the show. I'm so glad to have you here. Thank you, Tim. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, it's, it's great to have you here. We saw we met each other in October at Wizard Academy, and yeah. uh, which was hosted by our mutual friend, Alex Mendozian. And I really enjoyed talking with you then. So it's a pleasure to have you here on my show. Oh, it's a pleasure to be seen. So what is brain regeneration? You know, it's an interesting concept, right? You're not supposed to be able to regrow your brain. You're not supposed to, once you get damaged, it's supposed to be gone forever. And, you know, I've been in medicine for 22 years as a naturopathic physician and licensed acupuncturist. And every year I'm in practice, I get more and more confident with the body's ability to heal itself. It's the innate intelligence of you as an individual and it's the medicine, it's the information that we buy into the innate intelligence. Well, what does that look like in brain regeneration? So I, I'm honored to work with a lot of folks that have some serious diagnoses in neurodegeneration. Well, what are those? You know, I, I kind of chuckled on the Kurtzfeld Jacob, you know, those are not words you typically read every day, right? And it was a rare, very rare, rare condition, one in a million. And I always said Soraya was one in a million. And unfortunately, the medical professions agreed with me on that statement. You know, that's mad cow syndrome in people. So people are a little bit, maybe a little more familiar with mad cow syndrome. It depends on how old you are. In the 80s, tainted beef in Europe got released with mad cow syndrome, which is spongiform encephalitis, which is holy brain. Unfortunately, that is what I found myself in that predicament with Soraya and my children in medical practice. That was five years ago now. And it got me into this topic. I, you know, I graduated medical school 2001. I, at that point, I specialized in recalcitrant and difficult conditions, meaning you don't want to be the interesting patient under my care because I'm seeing the people that have been to the world experts around the globe and nobody knows what's happening with them. 
Then fast forward into the practice with Soraya, you know, here was a 42 year old developing some memory issues, which is not uncommon. We had just moved lots of stress, maybe perimenopause, possibly mold, but it became evident to me. I'd never seen anything like this before, especially in my then wife, Soraya. Within two months, she lost the ability to speak. Um, she lost her memory. We needed 24 seven care over the next 16 months. It just was a deterioration of her, of her state of being. I mean, we did everything that we could and I swung for the fence as loving husband and physician. It's like a tragic spot for a doctor to be in. It's like nothing you do makes a fucking matter, you know? Uh, but I, so it was, you know, a tremendous amount of growth for me, you know, navigating that grief and loss process. I really, I feel like I came through with an open heart and in a weird, such an odd and beautiful way, it reinstated my faith in the oneness of all of, you know, we're pretending to be separate in this reality right now. It's really real, but it is also, you know, it's also an illusion. So you know, it really gave me the power to speak into that reality, Tim. And I came through open-hearted. I knew I didn't want my suffering to be for naught and uncovered some amazing, amazing therapeutics that are helping thousands of people today. I wrote a book on Parkinson's called Shake It Off, an integrative approach to Parkinson's solutions and ran a brain regeneration. Now, is that, is that Parkinson's solutions? Is that the same as Parkinson's disease? Yeah, that's Parkinson's disease. Okay. Yeah, yeah, Michael J. Fox made famous there. Right. Um, right. And in all of that, in the brain regeneration, that was your question. I know this is my long-winded answer. For you. <laughs> yeah. But it, that's really what inspired me is like uh, taking a stand for people's health and in, in particular, employing and deploying everything that I learned on how do you regenerate the brain. So that's, that's what I'm up to today. I have a couple centers around the country. We're, we're coming together under a new name too, which is exciting to talk about. And I can share that with you too. Yeah. But that in brain regeneration, um, you know, we have Timothy, you know, Superman, Christopher Reeves to thank for really breaking ground up to his, up to the point of his accident, who's a paraplegic. He's the first one to start walking again after that accident. Before he did that, it wasn't even considered possible. I've had folks with Alzheimer's. Stage two, couldn't do one plus one math. After our Camp Nature Cures, my brain regeneration program, they're right. able to rattle off multiplication factors. I have people with living with Parkinson's disease with no evidence of disease and they were crippled on their couch. So again, I, I full on allow for the possibility for healing. I'm not claiming cure by any means. Right. But brain regeneration is, we're living at an amazing time, my friend. Wow, that's amazing. Okay, so I've got some questions about how it works. But before we get into that, what gives you the right to claim you're an expert on brain regeneration? Yeah, that's great. Gr great question. Number one, my experience living through it. Now, while I wasn't successful on that, I have been dubbed, it wasn't me. It was an integrative naturopathic group that called me North America's naturopathic neurologist, the number one in the country. And they actually filmed my calls for, it was called TAP. They flew me to Chicago. They wanted me to teach other providers because you know, what you learn in complementary alternative medicine, and actually even in neurology, neurologists have the highest suicide rate one of the highest in, in the medical profession because they can diagnose like anybody's business, yeah. but they really don't have a lot of solutions for people. And so I was talking to, you know, Case Western, basically they have the surveillance, the prionic surveillance center in North America. Soraya didn't get enrolled in their study of which they had 25 previous patients. The study for CJD was basically observational like this, like they do telemedicine. And then they offered me a free brain biopsy at the end of the run to prove that it was Chrisville Jacob disease. So in my search for answers on how to regenerate the brain, I developed friendships and relationships with some of the top brain researchers around the globe. And because I'm an out of the box thinker and naturopathic doctor, not stuck in the Western pharma model, Right. I actually am able to bring in a lot of different therapeutics and different thought processes in how to regenerate the brain. And then most importantly, you ask me how, is we actually get results for people. And yeah. 
we're showing clinical evidence to support that the brain can regenerate itself. And one case in point, once you lose your smell, you're not supposed to be able to get that back. And I'm not talking about long COVID or anything like that. A loss of sense of smell is a, an initial sign for neurodegeneration because that is cranial nerve one goes to your brain stem. And once those neurons are gone, they're not supposed to come back. Well, I had a patient come through after it was actually his wife. Her name's Kathy said, well, I guess Chuck got a sense of smell back. And this was a patient with an Alzheimer's diagnosis. I said, what are you talking about? She said, well, we, you know, it was during COVID. Their dogs had died like eight months prior. A car, you know, we're, this is up in Portland, Oregon, kind of, you know, it's wet up here. So it's kind yeah. of like wet dog smell. And Chuck got in the car. He's like, gosh, it really smells like dirty dog in here. And like, so she sheepishly came in and it's like, well, what, like, what are you talking about? She's like, well, you know, he hasn't been able to smell for like 15 years. So it didn't, you didn't bother me. And he never said anything about it. It's like, well, wow. that was one month after the procedure. So we brought back olfaction after 15 years. So we've got, we have clinical evidence that this is working and we're always working to improve the protocol to get more results faster. But that, you know, there's some fun stories in, along the way too. Okay, well now, uh, now you start talking about smell. So I, I kind of lost my smell during COVID, and yeah. I really haven't gotten it back. I mean, yeah. pre pre COVID, my smell wasn't that great, anyways. And now yeah. it's like I don't even. So what what do I what do I need to do? Yeah. So what that talks about is you still have neuroinflammation happening. So that okay. fire on your brain post COVID, and this is a very big comment. You know very big picture after after covid infection after sometimes having the the boosters will occasionally people will lose their sense of smell as well so that means you have neuroinflammation and we want to turn that off so it's not just like take this purple pill tim and yeah, right. all will be well right. but it is like you know, there's some specific blood work panels that we're running, especially for long COVID folks that have symptoms such as that, that there are some immunologic markers that are very clear on there that show neuroinflammation. So there's blood work that I would recommend to make sure that we go down the right path. You know, to cut to the chase, you're you're exercising, right? You're you're moving your body. I'm probably the healthiest person I know. I mean, yeah, I exercise, I, I do breath too. work, I pray, I meditate, I do red light therapy. Oh, I do I remember I do, I, cold plunges on a regular basis. Heck yeah. I'm taking all the stuff. I'm taking NAD, I'm taking peptides, I'm like I do all the I do all the things. You do all the things. You I and you and actually you truly do. I know because when we are talking down in Austin there at the Wizard Academy and you know, like your crew that you're all doing that together, which is wise to have community to actually, you know, put that into play so that everybody's superhuman, which is fun. Yeah. Um, there are still some nuances there because that's more the broad biohacking front for wellness. And there are maybe some specifics that you may be missing, but that's why I recommend to do, there's some specific panels to do on, there's some interleukins, four and six and one. There's some inflammatory pathways that need to get evaluated. Now, let's say those come back as, nope, it's none of that. So it's not neuroinflammation. Then you're looking at, okay, well, then you've got some quote unquote permanent neurodegeneration that you lost some cells. You lost down cranial nerve one, your olfaction. But more simply, there could be a nutrient deficiency in there of zinc. Zinc is a big one. So, you know, it just depends on what is the cause because not everybody arrives post COVID with loss of sense of smell for multiple months or years. So everybody gets there differently. It could have been some component of your genetic platform. It could be some environmental component that's happening now. It could be some stress in your life that's leading to other inflammation, even though you've got the stack for against reactive oxidative species and you know, you're taking all those antioxidants, peptides, you know, et cetera, mitochondrial, you know, boosting the energy factor. Methylene blue, ozone, like all yeah. of it. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, there, there, there potentially is there. If it's not, if you're not missing that smoking gun, 
then it's yeah. you don't have the right lever being pushed like in a regenerative sense, meaning that would be in the stem cell therapy category, exosomes along those lines. So that's the thing that comes to mind. If you've ruled out all of the other things of inflammation and you're positive it's not that, then you look at, okay, well, how do we bring back that life? And it, so it starts with blood work is what I'm hearing you say. Blood work and functional medicine testing. Yeah, we test, okay. you know, we don't just look at one facet. So one of the components that you read in my bio, and thank you for that, is around bioenergetics and frequencies. That really is the future. You're already tuned into it. You're doing red light therapy. That's that's frequency medicine right there. You're doing ozone. That's oxygen that's feeding your body battery. So looking at... Um, those aspects. So we do a voice scan. We actually do a voice scan that gives your a hologram of your bio field. So the bioenergetics of the body. That's, you know, I'm actually going to a mastermind later it, tomorrow. Come to is, think of it, it's tomorrow. Thursday is tomorrow. On how do we bring bioenergetics 50-50 into human consciousness around on par with physiology and biochemistry because there is enough evidence and more and more science to support the quantum reality as much as the newtonian physics world that we have all grown up in and i actually by by putting those therapeutics into clinical practice in addition to the biochemistry physiology uh, the more mattered world of therapeutics bringing in the frequency medicines of sound and light, lasers, chanting, we even put into, you know, chakra cleansing, you know, we do it all here, Tim. But wow. by by addressing all of the facets in a truly integrative fashion with an order, we get better and quicker results for people. Wow. I'm looking forward to talking about your Nature Cures Brain Regeneration Camp. Yeah. We'll get to that soon. Okay. Okay. So with with Soraya, do yeah. you think that if you knew what you know today, you could have saved her or extended her life or made her happier or, or I think more? we extended her life. Now, the quality of her life that we extended, I'm not sure. But I don't know if you or your listeners have been out there and had a loved one with their life on the line. You know, I, I wanted, I knew I wanted to leave it all on the field. And I didn't want to think like, oh, I should have done this. Like I employed freaking psychics. I, I mean, I went for it. Like I, yeah. any, any option I wanted just to, I wanted to uncover every stone I could because I knew for myself, for the kids, for her kids, you know, I, we needed to do that. And I, that's why I say I came through really wholehearted, open-hearted being because I knew I did everything I could. I mean, I was calling researchers at Scripps University. They're doing IV NAD on mice to inactivate prions. Now, prions, which I didn't really talk about. I don't know if that's interesting to you and your crew. And I don't know um, what a prion you know, is. Well, you should. Okay. So I'm glad I brought it up. So these are underlying. And so this is why I wrote about Parkinson's is because nobody has Kritzfeld Jacob disease. Well, not nobody, but 300 people in North America have Kritzfeld Jacob or CJD a, a year. That's not a lot of people, but I got the prionic textbook. So number one, a prion, 1987, Stanley Prusiner, UCSF got a Nobel prize for the discovery of prions. They were not known before then. Okay. Uh, people thought they were viruses or something else, but it's a misfolded protein that has no genetic material. It's kind of like a senescent cell in the longevity world is, you know, you get these senescent cells that are zombies that start turning off other cells um, and create rapid aging. Well, the same thing, a prion acts that way, but it misfolds other proteins. And that's how like CJD becomes, you get holes in your brain. So it's like basically okay. spongiform encephalitis. So spongiform looks like a sponge, encephalitis, your brain, your brain looks like a sponge. Well, other proteins that misfold, because I know, because I got the first textbook, it's still in the first textbook of prionic diseases, alpha-synuclein, that's at the root of Parkinson's disease, beta amyloid plaque, that's at the root of Alzheimer's, Dow proteins, T-A-O, T-A-U. So there are a whole slew of proteins that misfold. And it, it it's kind of an aha moment as to why there's been no major breakthroughs in neurology in about 350 years. 
because they're not addressing the root cause. They're going after symptoms. You know, for Parkinson's disease, they're going after dopamine, dopaminergic receptors with that's like carbidopa, levodopa is the drug. That drug came on the market in 1974. I think we can do better. Mm -hmm. So there are researchers looking at prions, but they're really hard to innovate. Actually, what came out of my research is a, I have a patent pending on a nasal spray. There's $4 million of NIH research on the ingredients to inactivate prions. So I have a, you know, a nasal spray. It's called ClearMind that came out of that search for solutions for Sarai. I call it basically the work Sarai's gifts. You know, she informs really what we're doing in, in helping as many people as we can with the brain health. Okay. You said it, you said a lot there and I'm like, I'm, I know. I'm, I'm, I, I'm, trying, I, I'm, I'm trying to follow it. So, yeah. okay. What, so I guess why the next question, why do you call yourself a brain specialist? You already kind of talked about this, but let's, let's, yeah, hear you know, it, it's because I lived it. And basically that's all I'm researching these days is really how do we regenerate the brain? I got all of the bots out there bringing me the articles. I've got colleagues now in very high places that are collaborators, innovators in the space. And, you know, ultimately you asked me if I knew today, I know that was my long, I'm a long winded answerer. So sorry it's about great. that. You it's asked great. Me, you're giving us a lot of good information in your long winded answers. Yeah. So you, you asked, you know, if I knew today, what I knew today, would that have saved Sarai's life? And the answer is, I have no idea. You know, I gave up thinking I'm doing anything because I mean, seriously, like it was, it's tragic. Like, I don't wish that on anybody. Right. And I, you know, whatever ego I had before, like having a wounded healer trying to heal his dying wife and it doesn't work. Like mm. I could have thrown in the towel, moved down to Mexico, lived on the beach in pure depression the rest of my life. Right. Like it, I could have, like, that was a choice. I definitely thought about that often. I'm like, fuck it. I'm done. Like I'm worthless. I can't even save my wife's life, right. you know, but it, that's not the way it went. It went the way of, man, this is a effed up story. We must've written this before we got here to wake me up to the unity of all. And, and it really opened my heart to like, you know, it, there's a law in physics is you know, energy cannot be created nor destroyed. It just changes form. So it, it opened up this whole realm of possibilities for me of like, wait a minute, I come from a whole ancestral lineage and they're actually not that far away. They've just left their bodies. And so starting to ask, ask questions of that intelligence and being surprised, like getting curious on it, like whatever your belief systems are out there. I mean, you know, whatever, I'm making up a story I just happen to like this story. I tend to be a radical optimist as well. But, you know, if I'm wrong, big whoop. I, I have this now. I have all of these allies and a more magical, serendipical world and to draw from. And, and you know, it's just got better color. It's like Technicolor now. So we've got, we have that ability to, to ask for support, for intuition. You know, on the ancestral, I, I guess I'll just riff on this, Tim. So... On that ancestral lineage component, there's the question, why? Why do prions, why, where do prions come from? Why do prions, why do proteins misfold? And I came across a line of research on trauma. And I, I know this is near and dear to the community there of, you know, I love living sober community of like, it's a self-medication component, right? In the addictions world. And a lot of trauma underlies. People are looking for relief. It's unfortunate that some of the relief then is also very damaging to their lives and to their bodies. But in another fashion is this ancestral lineage and looking at, it could have been your great, 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 great grandmother's traumas that are now expressing genetically today. So it has made my job as a clinician much harder you know, but really assessing the family line, the lineage, and also addressing your own trauma through birth, childhood, adulthood, 
the world trauma of just living through one of the massive events on the planet, you know, there's a lot of suffering in this plane of existence. So there's, you know, I guess three truths are we're born, we live and we die. We can lay any type of story on top of there, but it is, it, it's made, made the world more magical for me. I definitely have a deep appreciation for the preciousness of this life. You know, we won the lottery, one in 500 million chance of being here. Right. You know, and so looking at it, like all of those facets, I know kind of, you got me in an attention deficit disorder afternoon, but it's kind of fun. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, and, and as you're, you're talking, I'm just, I'm thinking about, you know, life happens for me, not to me is yeah. the, the whole, your whole experience with Soraya. Yeah. On one hand, you're like, screw this. I'm out of here. But yeah. then on the other hand, it's like, hold on, you know, it's like all of these things happened. What does it mean? And yeah. let me continue moving forward. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's what I believe. And then inflammation. So it, I did another, I did an interview with Danny Williamson. And the title of the interview was Inflammation is the Devil. And and it's it's like, you know, in speaking about trauma. Yeah. So, you know, trauma can be your grandmother, your great grandmother, or or her mother or her grandmother. And so that comes out in the way of inflammation possibly it can so all of those traumas create epigenetic changes so you know we have our genes just because you have the same genes as your parents doesn't mean they're going to express the same way so i see oftentimes i see patients are like oh well you know mom had dementia or dad had dementia or we're watching through our parents go through these you know suffering states of illness it doesn't necessarily mean that you will express your genes that way only 33% of the time. So given the right circumstances, so there is this epigenetic, what is around the genes? What is influencing their expression? Well, traumas and stress and inflammation definitely cause weaknesses to be shown in genetic expression. So it's while, you know, it's maybe not like one-to-one -one correlation, the inflammation to the disease, there is a lot of disease states that are one-to-one -one correlation. Right. So speaking about dementia, Alzheimer's disease, I've, I think I've heard, okay, so loss of smell is an in, what is the loss of smell an indicator of? Yeah. So I, I'm sorry to say this to you, Tim, but you have had some cellular damage to your brain. Okay. So, because it means you've lost receptors to process that information. Mm -hmm. So if it's long-term, now there are short-term losses that doesn't mean the, the neurons or the nerves died, mm -hmm. but the long-term, that's why I brought up the story of Chuck with his wife and the wet dogs. Right. He hadn't had a smell for 15 years. That is right. assumed cellular death at that point. He also right. had Alzheimer's, which is more cellular death, right. but we're showing benefit at, in significant, serious pathology. So the good news is for the post viral syndrome that you've gone through or others that have lost their sense of smell. It can be though, one of those telltale signs, like we do a skin scratch test, right? Remember the scratch and sniff books of childhood. Yeah. Um, well, loss of sense of smell is an early sign of, of brain damage and, you know, possibly memory loss. So now I had a traumatic brain injury in 1996. Could mm -hmm. my loss of smell stem from my tra traumatic brain injury? Totally. You know, traumatic brain injury. And that's why we're talking about brain frequency with you, right? Yep. Is So having that trauma creates inflammation. Oftentimes I see people with concussions and head traumas, and this is what we're doing up at Park City. We led with traumatic brain injury and concussion care because there's so many athletes and so many people are so active. Right. Yep. But you can have repercussions. Like if you don't put that fire out, conventional care is like, okay, you know, you're not going into seizures. You're fine. Right. right. Just kind of chill out for a couple of days and then, you know, then you're good. But it didn't do anything to put the fire out on the brain. That was head trauma, inflammation. That inflammation is the fire on the brain. And so I've seen people five, 10 years after an accident, and they're still, they're, they're still having sequelae or the after effects from the head trauma and the concussion with, you know, personality changes, emotional control issues, basically inflammation on the brain.
Right. So we can read that, by the way, as we do a 19 lead EEG on the brain. So we don't just guess on that. We're actually taking qualitative EEGs of the brain to see where's over underactive. You can pick up imbalances from head traumas 10, 20 years after. I mean, we have NFL players 30 years ago. They're getting their brains back. We're getting texts from their kids after Thanksgiving, like, thanks so much. We got our dad back, you know? Yeah. Chuck Liddell, the mixed martial arts fighter, knocked out six times, right? World champion. But he had no impulse control. He was angry. Basically, he just said the world was just grayed out. And um, he credits doing the brain frequency, bringing his brain back online. So by all means, yes, that could have been at root of your, at the beginning stages or set the stage for this now for you to lose that sense of smell. Wow. Uh. What do you mean by the statement exploring cutting edge therapeutics through an ancient lens? Yeah. So my background is in Chinese medicine. So I've been a Chinese medicine practitioner for 25 years. Actually, I started in 98 studying, but so it's an evolution, but I use that framework. So that's the ancient lens because I see a lot of biohackers, longevity pursuit, even Western therapeutics in an integrative model, but they don't have the right framework, according to me, to actually, it's called the Zheng of the formula or direction. So we move people, like there's a general, or sorry, emperor, empress at the top, that's the heart. Then there's generals on the side, and then there's assistants to move, move the therapeutics and move the, the heart-centered dynamic being to what I call Wellville. When there isn't an implicit order to a prescription or program, I call it the Western approach, which is the shotgun approach, which is, okay, I'm doing all of these things because these are all of the good things to do. But then that's like treading water. Like that's important. That keeps your head above water. But if you're doing all of the things and not getting movement, it just means like, okay, maybe less is more than one, but two, maybe it is you're needing the direction the heart or the emperor empress to lead in the direction where the innate intelligence needs to go because there's so much information coming in and the intelligence is really responsive to it but it's not enough like we think we're going to do all of these things it's just going to raise our vitality right it should in theory right it's like more is better in the west uh, yeah but but it is, sometimes I see less is more where it's a directed, it's like chi or energy flow. It's a certain path that you get the innate intelligence on, and then you get wind in the sails, and then you can start putting the other therapeutics behind it to increase the momentum to the desired destination, which I'll just affectionately call Wellville here. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Love it. All right, let's so talk then, about so cutting edge therapeutics. So let I'll get to that. That was the that was the underlying ancient lens. Yeah. So the cutting edge therapeutics, and I've mentioned a couple of them, like the brain frequency. We do a laser activated and guided V cell procedure. V is in Victor, so that's very small embryonic like stem cell procedure. I, I serve on their medical advisory board. It's a patented process that on cells I didn't even know existed in the body. Have you ever heard of V cells? No. Okay. So I had not either. They were discovered in 2005 by Dr. Ratichak at University of Kentucky. There is still controversy, folks, on V cells. Do they exist? Are they really there? I will tell you that they do exist. And I will say we have strong clinical evidence on heart. There's a study now, not huge, not huge multivariate studies. So this is cutting edge. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. We have four papers out on B cells in the clinical realm. One is a compendium of uh, all of the best research on B cells. But I will tell you, the I'm a clinician's clinician. I want to make differences in the real world for people. I mentioned the Alzheimer's patient with Alzheimer's that we had reverse. He went from one plus one math to multiplication factors to getting a sense of smell back. Patients with Parkinson's disease, they have no evidence of the tremor, stutter step, weak mm -hmm. voice, none of that. I've had patients come in that their orthopedic surgeons were saying you need a, a shoulder, a knee, hip replacement. They don't need those anymore. We've had torn meniscuses. 65-year-old woman came in very active. 
playing competitive tennis at 65, three to five hours a day, couldn't walk up the stairs because of a torn left meniscus. Nine out of 10 pain. Doc was saying, hey, we just go in there, arthroscopic, you know, clean it up, no problem. You know, that leads to all kinds of issues with arthritis as you, especially for somebody who's using their knees so much. She came back two weeks after the procedure. She said, ah, ah. I said, okay, how you doing, Missy? She said, I'm a little sore. I said, a little sore. Okay, well, what's going on? She said, well, I just hiked 18.3 miles in the Tetons. And I played tennis four times this week for about three hours each day. I'm like, what the hell? Yeah, 18. And I said, so you hiked 18 miles in the Teton. She said, doctor, that was 18.3 miles. I was like, yeah, anybody in the right body would be sore from hiking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I, it is the largest lever that I've discovered that with exosomes. Exosomes are, exo is out of some the cell. So these are what? Stem cells secrete. Those can also be very beneficial for patients. We use quantum healing and bed. So we have a Q bed in the clinic. We're looking at the amortal bed, which is sound and light and frequency all put in on a bed to create a field. You put the body into that field and the body re recognizes source energy. It's like a reset button. Mm -hmm. for so those are just kind of off the cuff some of them so if you have any specific questions or yeah i mean i love it and yeah i mean it's like what are my specific questions i just as you're talking i think about you know they have those red light therapy beds I yeah mean, the things that just average people can find where they live like i live here in in arizona yeah where can i find some of these cutting edge therapeutics that can help me with my, yeah. just, without having to go to your nature yeah. cures camp, which I still want to learn more. I'm looking yeah, forward to learning more cures, about it. Brain regen camp. Yeah. yeah. So the, so but we're basically, we are rebranding as energy for life centers. So I, I, this is the world premiere first announcement on the interwebs. I love with, it. Energy mm -hmm. life centers. Okay. Yeah. Energy, energy for life centers. Okay. And they're recharging centers and it's a bioenergetic flagship. So Yes, you probably have like red lights, juve lights, there's pulsed electromagnetic frequency devices. Yep. There, you know, cryotherapy, ozone therapy, hyperbaric therapy. You know, a lot of people or places have these devices put in. But as I mentioned, it's the zhong of the formula, or it is the prescription and program to actually get you to Wellville is what matters in the real world. Yeah, you can go into a light bed. There's a, some NASA tech, technology that got licensed into some light beds. I mean, they're, you know, left and right, I'm just seeing more and more beds popping up. It's like as if we need to lay well, down. Well, the, yeah, they have, I mean, tanning salons now have red light beds. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, like that's that's a thing. I mean, yeah. I know some people who, you know, my, my girlfriend, she's like, I'm gonna go to the tanning salon to go to the yeah. red light bed and she, and she gets her fix. And yeah. So that's, yeah, it's becoming more available. We are light beings. I mean, there's home units that you can get as well. There's some Tesla coils coming on the market. There's biochargers, there's biomats, you know, there's rife frequencies. You know, there are a lot of different things on the market. So you can find them in your local communities, most of them. And then if you're wanting the expertise of program development to actually get real world results. Yeah. yeah. And we have, there will be more than just the Park City and Portland, Oregon clinics coming to a town near you soon. Well, okay. So let's talk about the Nature Cures Brain Regeneration Camp, which is now the Energy for Life Camp. Is that correct? Well, no, I'm going to, I'm going to keep a tat, you know, a tip to the hat to the past for me. I'm calling it Camp Nature Cures Not, and okay. it's Brain, Brain Regeneration Camp. So it's a week long program that we put together and it's my process on brain regeneration. So there's an assessment before folks come, they come out, they get a V cell procedure. They're on pulsed electromagnetic frequency lights. They're on low level laser lights. They're getting acupuncture, We're doing Chinese herbs. We're doing the voice hologram and programming infoceuticals into the body. It, you know, that's the camp. People are camped out at the clinic for the week mm -hmm. and we're really looking to create transformations for folks. So we give a lot of support post-care with nutritional 
components, movement. Like there's a lot of maintenance. Like we we don't want it to be a one-off, Tim. We are looking to create sustainable change for folks, but there is a point sometimes in somebody's care where they're needing a lifeboat to come along. And that's the lifeboat for a lot of folks. What I'm coming out and talking to you about is really trying to educate people. Hey, let's get ahead of this because the stats are sucky. When we look forward by 2030, it's predicted 50% of 65 year olds are gonna have some form of mild cognitive impairment or dementia. The actuarial data from 20, I wanna say 2019 Blue Cross Blue Shield, guess how, what the average age of dementia was in the Blue Cross Blue Shield system in 2019 was? 74. Oh, actually reverse those numbers, 47 years old. Wow. So it is getting younger and younger. And I'm seeing younger and younger people with some significant neurodegeneration that we saw only in 60, 70, and 80 year olds in the past. Why, so why, do, you think, past, yeah. why do you think that is? Oh, there's a lot of reasons on that. So number one. I mean, I have my thoughts, my yeah. initial thoughts, but I, I want to hear it from so you. So I used to think, so here's my old thought on that was it's environmental toxicity, which is still a front runner. There are levels of toxicants in our environment, about 80,000 different chemicals we get exposed to in North America per week. These have never been tested in the human body. We have glyphosate, which is a freaking crime against humanity from Monsanto in their Roundup product. That is cancer causing. It's also will cause proteins to misfold and it leads to all kinds of illness in the human body, which is now found in children's cereals, right? Mm -hmm. So there's, there's, that's one level. Genes in an environment lowering men's testosterone, right? Men's mm -hmm. testosterone is lowered one to 2% every year after 40 years old. That's not normal, but it's common. So there's that, that was my old thought, like, oh, it's gotta be, it's gotta be toxicants. My new working hypothesis is around, I believe that these ancestral lineage, we've been on the planet for much longer. So there's much more accumulated levels of trauma in the human system. And we've never been taught how to effectively deal with it. Now, there's interesting components coming out of tribes of Africa who are way more community-based. They would never think to do things alone, by the way. But there is like family constellation therapy that, that came out of Africa. Just came across a new system of care out of West Africa where they're talking about the elements, which is very Chinese medicine oriented. So that kind of drew and piqued my interest. But looking at... Trauma, trauma history, trauma inventory for my patients, and then also ancestral lineage traumas. Like there is, when when you start, it, you know, it's like the elephant in the room. And I know this is big in your industry, right? I mean, that's at the heart of it, is it not? Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So it is, for me, we've been as a species on the planet longer, and I think we've accumulated much more debris in our cells. So that limbic and amygdala system, the reptilian brain gets imprinted. Once that goes off, fight, flight, freeze, that's your stress response, that deposits information in all of your cells. So then, you know, why was it an older person's issue? Was, well, they had had more decades on the planet and hadn't effectively dealt with the traumas. Now, you know, when I, if I talk to my dad's generation, they're like, that's a bunch of hooey, you know, just get some thick skin and move on. But they're the ones get it, the predominant ones with the trauma. Right, right, right. right. Never been dealt with. It's like, yeah, easy for you guys to say, but you're going to, you're going to lose your memory because the innate intelligence says, you know what? They're not ready to deal with it. Maybe next time let's shut it down. So there goes the memory. Then there's no issue with trauma because you can't remember. You can't remember it. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I know I was talking with you about some other ways to, I guess, work through trauma when we, when we met, and I don't yeah. think we're going to go into that here on, on this show. However, I would like to know who's a candidate for your nature cures camp. Yeah. So for camp nature cures, it's, there's three broad categories. There's obviously the, 
the given is with neurodegeneration, you have a diagnosis now, either newly diagnosed or even progressed into an illness, it is never too late. So that's one camp. The, the second one is brain health. Maybe you've seen your parents through going through this or your grandparents, you're concerned, you're maybe, maybe some inklings like you lost your sense of smell, or maybe you're more forgetful or your levels of stress are up and you're having some memory difficulties. That's a great candidate. And then my favorite group, not that I don't like the first two, but it hit me is like, wait a minute, if we're able to reverse brain degeneration for folks that are in pathology for decades, how about preventing it and going for a longevity play? Yeah. And that's the fun, that's the fun stuff right there. Because we we are I work with biohackers, folks that are into longevity, folks that are up to something in the world that are making a difference. We want to recharge you so you're superhuman, your light and heart shine so brightly. You share that with your communities. And that is actually how we create the change on the planet to see, I like to say heaven on earth faster than we ever dreamed possible. Is we, you know, we come together, we get charged up. That's why I'm calling these things recharging centers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now is, is the camp, is it seven days or is it five days? Yes, it's five days to 15 days, depending on what you're okay. wanting to get accomplished. But a lot of folks, you know, even the five days is a tough ask, but not if you're in pathology and not if you really understand what's at stake here. So we, we have people come out for the week and, you know, we're doing therapeutics throughout the day. We have a lot of fun with it. Mm -hmm. We set intentions, you know, we get woo woo yeah, uh, and we use the hard science too. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. And then is it like at, at an outpatient? Is it outpatient yeah. or is it? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So they stay we in the hotel or whatever. And they, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Team can make it really easy. We have some concierges in the Park City area. My staff here in Portland help with accommodations and, you know, restaurant recommendations. Depends on what your scene is, what you like to do. Yeah. 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 I love it. I love it. Okay. Okay. And you say some people for five days and some day, some people for 15 days, what's the difference? Why would someone want to like, who's the quick fix and who's yeah. the, who's so the if days? you're like, I've had folks fly in from Europe, Germany, from Mexico, they're coming in for five days. Now, if we get into a brain frequency, so if it was head trauma concussion, my recommendation is two weeks because we've got to do so many brain frequency treatments. It's like going mm -hmm. to the gym to create change. You're not going to build muscles in a day. So we have people come in twice a day to, to get that therapy. And then we run them through some circuits on some other, you know, cardiac front on the neurodegen front. So we do ozone saunas and EWAT and hyperbarics. And we have an all core machine that works all 50 of your core muscles of the, of the body, which also helps proprioception. So if you have any balance or instability issues we do all of those things in addition to acupuncture what's a brain frequency treatment yeah so brain frequency is you can look it up on brainfrequency.ai and it's using tms technology transcranial magnetic stimulation mm -hmm. but it's about 20th the dose so it's it's cut down on the dose of the tms and much more effective i might add so tms has got kind of shoddy results for recalcitrant depression, but ITMS, we're showing much better and lasting results for folks, but you sometimes need 20 to 40 treatments of that. So that's where the two week component comes in for concussions along those lines. Right. And the, the research I've done, it, it, you know, it's evidence shown that stacking TMS treatments like day after day, after day, after day is much better than once yeah. a week, for example, right? Yeah. Yeah. That training, it's like many times over creates the new neuronal pathway. And so with the, when you're talking central nervous system and brain waves frequencies, you just have to remind the intelligence, like this is the place, this is the place, this is the place. And we remeasure every 10 treatments and lo and behold, it really, it effectively and noticeably moves the needle. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay, I think we're getting to the end of this interview. Is there a question that you wanted me to ask you that I did not ask? No, this was great, Tim. You were super thorough. Okay, awesome. Okay, one question I ask everybody. Tell me about your morning routine. My morning routine. 
every day I'm meditating. Sometimes I meditate 20 minutes with breath work, holotropic okay. breath work. Uh -huh. One of my favorites on that is, currently is David Elliott. Uh, he does some great guided breath works that, you know, you can just download or, and, or I'll do a dispensa meditation for an hour to an hour and a half. Those are my favorites. I also have a great resource out of England, Neelam, the quantum alchemist. And I, and I, I love Neelam. She's, she's a beautiful being. She does some amazing, amazing transmissions and breath works. And I just want to give a shout out to her. I went actually over to Glastonbury for the spring equinox and did an in-person visit with her there for a, for a retreat. And just phenomenal, phenomenal work. So I, I really start there. And then I have the all core machine here. So I try to get on that three times a week. It's a 10 minute ride, but it, it hits, it's a high intensity workout, nice. but I, I really keep it simple, Tim. Mm -hmm. uh, it's resetting into that quantum field for me really sets the day. So I'm envisioning during mm -hmm. that time, what is going on, how, who's opening their eyes up after the meditation who I want to be. Right. Most, most days it's interdimensional wizard, but you know, we, we go for it. Uh huh. Love it. And, and really that's it. And I come in for my team huddle. So I, I keep it awesome. really super simple. Yeah. And so breath work, do you do breath work on a daily basis? I, yes, I love it. You know, it, we, we actually are running, I'll, I'll share this with your listeners. It's, it's an online academy. We just had our breath work section last night. So it's called youofyouth.com and it's open to everybody right now. We're teaching on my seven pillars to becoming superhuman. And so that's a lot of fun, but there are so many different types, like box breathing, the four, seven, eight breath. I have a three burner breath where you're doing lower, middle, and upper Dantian or burner. I learned that in Qigong from Master Wong, my teacher of Jinjiang School of Qigong. So I'm I'm kind of um, I'm not partial to a system. It's and and then of course the pat answer is don't forget to breathe, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, most people you if you. Once you start doing breath work, you start looking and you start paying attention. Most people walk around taking Not shallow breaths. Yeah. Most yeah, people true. don't breathe. It's true. And, and I first became aware of that in 2016 when I went to see somebody because I was trying to learn how to run. Yeah. <laughs> because, because I couldn't run. And the first thing he said, he said, well, um, first thing is you're not breathing. I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's, it's interesting. I mean, I do breath work on a daily basis as well. And I think people don't realize just how powerful Oh yeah. Breath work is. And I mean, I get myself to an elevated state. I mean, my, like, like everything can change and there's so many different types of breath work as, as you just mentioned. And I just, yeah. I I'm a huge oh. fan. Yeah. Likewise. I mean, it is called the breath of life and prana, which is chi or life force. So it is, I mean, it's one of those secrets, like, yeah, that's actually super free technique. Everybody can do it. Yeah. And rarely no one does. Like we haven't been taught how to breathe properly. Right. Right. Um, well, because people think, oh, well, I know how to breathe. Yeah. And that, Look, that's doing it now. Yeah. I, I think that's why. So I agree. And, anyways, how Dr. Greg Eckel, everybody, how, where where can people find you? A couple different spots. I'm gonna give you bevitalpc.com, naturecuresclinic.com. And then if you're watching this in the future, it's going to those will go to energyforlifecenters.com. So there's three. Awesome, awesome. Okay, that does it for our time with Dr. Greg Eckel. And before we end this episode, I want you to go to the review section on iTunes or comment section of YouTube and type in the one thing that resonated with you. Every comment counts and what you share could resonate with someone else that's struggling and potentially save their life. So go ahead, share the one thing that resonated with you in the review section. It'll take just 60 seconds out of your day, but what you share could not only save you, but also save someone else's life. Mm -hmm. Okay, that does it for this week. I'm Tim Westbrook here with Dr. Greg Eckel. And I hope that our paths cross again in the next episode of I Love Being Sober. Awesome. Thanks, Tim. If you found this video to be of value, be sure to like it. Subscribe to our channel if you want to see more videos. Leave a comment if you have a question or if you've got something to say. 
Camelback Recovery provides treatment services for people struggling with mental health, mental illness, addiction, alcoholism. So if you or someone you know is struggling, be sure to reach out to us. You can go to our website, camelbackrecovery.com, or our information is in the comments section below. And we provide everything from detox, inpatient, outpatient treatment, sober living, recovery coaching, sober companion services. So either we'll be able to help you or we'll be able to refer you to people or treatment centers that might be a better fit. So I will see you in the next video.